solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. One of the things in the book, uh, Raghu, which really caught my attention was you say that actually Bhagavad Gita hmm. might very well have been a conversation between Karna ah. and uh, Krishna. And <laughs> the fact that it didn't happen was a lost opportunity. Karna possibly did not even see that as an opportunity. And That's eventually, right. Eventually, it ended up being a conversation between Arjuna and Krishna. That's, That's right. right. So do you want to expand on that? How uh, just the implication of that insight in daily life, you know, what, what if, you, if you want to sort of... Yeah, sure. Sort of, See, the, there's one very, very uh, exciting thing in the Bharata Kuta, na? Tamil Bharata Kuta, where there is a conversation between um, Sanjaya and Dhridharashtra, which is a retelling of the whole Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very interesting because the whole dialogue goes like this. Na? Dhridharashtra says, hey, tell me the story again so that I can understand where I screwed up. Okay, so Sanjaya goes through the whole story. And he goes step by step. He says, ah, that is where I lost the war. Yeah, there this, you know, he goes through this thing of his son having, you know, been envious. Mm -hmm. And he comes and talks to Dhridharashtra from that envy. He says, I lost the war then. Mm -hmm. And like that, now he goes through step by step. Each step where if the person, if the Kaurava side, had responded differently, there'd have been no war. Mm. Now, if you look at the, the character of Karna, he's a, he's a Pandava, right? But abandoned and he holds deep, deep wounds, mm. right? Of, uh, you know, orphanhood, of honor and things like this. And there are many stories that tell you how he's actually a greater warrior than Arjuna, mm. in many ways, right? Mm. He's much more capable, mm. right? But there is this deep anger and angst and hurt in him, apart from his other greatness. Huh? And if you look at many situations, yeah, you'll see that people with tremendous capability, but with a deep wound, have used all their capability in vengeful vengefulness or in some way to keep compensating for the hurt, never healing the hurt. Mm. Right? Now, if Karna, who is very, you know, he, he's very alive today. Okay? Yeah, every person with a grouse about us and them is a Karna. Mm. Yeah, every person who feels deprived or denied or discriminated against is a karna. Mm. Right? And these are people with a with lot of ability, a lot of capability, whom society has said, because you're not of certain pedigree, your beauty and your capability will not be honored. Right? Mm. And... Almost every crisis today, you can trace it back to this kind of a violation mm. of human beings, right? Mm. So if I can have a conversation with this hurt psyche and help this psyche heal and say, I will move from using my power for retribution, mm. yeah, using my power for uh, you know, some vengefulness, to looking at how to build a beautiful world, mm. right? It would change to change everything. That's what they tried now in South Africa, mm. truth and reconciliation. That's what Gandhiji tried now of saying, how can I assert myself? How can I ask for independence without hating the oppressor, mm. right? Because once you, you hate the oppressor, you internalize the oppressor. Mm. 
And you then become extremely oppressive yourself. You can see that in history. Right? So this conversation is waiting to be had. Mm. Yeah? And if enough people who are suffering from the reality of all colonized people in the world are waiting for this dialogue. Mm. Fascinating. Right? And then they become the oppressors or yeah, many of the people in the so-called West na, who have misused their power, you go back, they will have a story of vengefulness, of hate. Mm. Right? So if you can have a conversation with a Krishna where this hate is dissolved, the world will be a different place. Rahu, uh, if we bring this to our current uh, situation and context, the Karna Krishna discussion, ha- do you see that happening? Has it been had in different situations that you observe? Yes, yes, I think it's been had. Um, for example, this truth and reconciliation thing that was tried out in South Africa was clearly an attempt to enable people who've been violated to have a conversation with their violators Mm. in a larger context, not of retribution, Mm. but of some kind of a a healing process, right? I think this has qualities of what I'm talking about, right? The, The way Gandhiji spoke about Swaraj, about Swatantrata, was, I think, another step in this direction, right? Where he was clearly not coming from a hate of the oppressor. But, uh, you know, he took Tilak's statement, na? Swaraj is my birthright, to a very beautiful level. Na? So I don't have to ask for independence from you. I claim my independence. But this claiming of independence, if it's with anger and hate, it's not independence. So there is a deep healing of wounds here and a listening to a voice which helps you dissolve this anger, dissolves vengefulness, and so on, right? Martin Luther King has talked about it. There are people today working in the uh, Israel-Palestine context who are speaking about similar things, right? Where Israelis and Palestinians are talking about how we get beyond mutuality of hurt and, you know, violence, this kind, and look at each other as human beings, right? So it's not as though there are no indications of this, but I think it has to be emphasized. It has to have a a very, very strong presence. Mm -hmm. And Krishna at some level is not a person, but it's a concept, but who? No, more than a concept. It's not just a concept. See, when I, when I dissolve my sense of self, see, in, in, the yoga, in the yoga tradition, this is very, very clear. And partly this is what is discussed in the Bhagavad Gita also. Na? When the sense of self is dissolved completely, then the mind becomes silent. Mm. Right? In that silence, there is the voice of pure intelligence, of consciousness that can be heard. That voice is the voice of Krishna. That is Krishna. Right? Now, it is portrayed in a human form for the dramatic uh, thing and to build up that whole context and so on. And also, now, if you look at the Indian context, you know, uh, all the gods grow with you. Right? So, Krishna initially will be shown as this little guy who loves butter. and So the child can relate to this. But you're also told that these are the Kalyana Gunas. Now, these are all the most beautiful qualities of this child. Then he becomes an adolescent. Mm-hmm. right? And then he becomes a young person. Finally, you're told that Krishna is the deep indigo color of the sky when there is no moon. So you're having a conversation with that. Hmm. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Krishna. So you call it Krishna. 
right? You're just referring to this color, yeah, to dark matter. <laughs>